Greetings, I am Rob Chappers and welcome from the inside of my cupboard to the inside of my room. Well, I've been on tour across the east coast of America for the last two weeks. It's been really awesome. I've eaten all sorts of dirty food from Cracker Barrel biscuits and gravy through to uh, some pretty incredible burgers and some great salads as well. And uh, I've had a couple of days of recuperation and I'm back off on tour tomorrow <laughs> to do the um, the rest of the uh, the previous tour which we postponed the dates of because I got ill in Glasgow. So this is a bit of a dual purpose video. Firstly it's just to chat because I get a bit bored and I want to chat to you guys and show you some of my cool Plectrum collection, a bit of a weird geeky thing, and to tell you about the dates, times of the venues on this tour, uh, which will mark a pretty interesting stage in Dorje's development. This will be the last tour before we release an album, um, and lots of things are gonna kick off for us, which is really, really exciting. Uh, I'm using a prototype uh, Chapman Ghost Fret. Um, the final product won't look anything like this. This is just a prototype. The final product will not be gloss. Um, it'll be satin, just like my blue one, but I had it to hand and I've packed the car with my touring gear, so this is what I'm using today. I'm using a little Black Star HT1, again, because I packed the car with all my stuff. I would have loved to have taken the Red Dwarfs out, but unfortunately both of them broke in transit from America to England, so um, I've got to ship them back off to Victory and get them fixed. Um, they were soaking wet when they arrived, so a bit of a shame, really, one of those things. Anyway, plectrums. I've got a really random collection. I want to show you what happens when you're a professional guitar player and you spent, I don't know, years. Every single one is different. <laughs> I have a real problem with picks. Recently, I found the pick for me. Um, I say that, I mean, it is for me right now. It's the Gravity Razor. I've got a signature pick. You can get it from Anderton's and uh, also from Riff City in America. I, I love it to pieces. But let me show you how I got there. The process of elimination. Um, I started off ages ago using these Brit picks. So Brit picks are... Uh, I hope it'll focus. Probably won't. Plectrum. It's blue. You know what? I'll do a close-up. There you go. How's that? that? That figures things out, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it's made of recycled materials. It's blue. It's plastic. Um, so they're not celluloid, uh, and the interesting thing about Brit picks is they kind of feel really nice in the fingers. They got this um, really odd, creamy texture. <laughs> um, they just wore down quite a lot for me. <laughs> They play great, but they wore down quite fast, feel nice, they don't bend. I enjoyed that, but it wasn't good enough. Next, unusual plectrum. Well, I got this one actually on America when I was in tour. It's this. Now, this is kind of gross, slightly weird. Um, if you take a look at the close-up, you can see there's little tiny red pigmentation going throughout it. This is actually dental gum material. Um, I was given this by a, a, a dentist uh, in Nashville and he'd made it for me um, from the material they make dentures from. Uh, obviously it's new material, it hadn't been used by some person. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I have never used this before. Here goes my first take on a denture gum manufactured flexion. <laughs> pretty slippery. It's got a nice... It's got a nice release to it. It's an interesting material. It doesn't smell. It kind of grips, I suppose as you'd imagine it would do, grips the fingers quite nicely. Yeah, it's a nice material, but weird. 
Next pick up, I used these for a long time. This is the standard Planet Waves celluloid. Uh, it's the 1.25mm, it's the camouflage pick. Um, again, these are great picks. I still use these sometimes if they're just hanging around. Um, you've probably been playing on these for years. Not that you can really hear a difference through a camera like this with the YouTube compression, but it feels different depending on what you use. Yeah, really good, but not quite sharp enough for me. And again, they wore down quite fast. Little tiny bit of flex, but pretty good memory. They don't retain a shape if you bend them, but not for me. This is where it gets weird. Sick picks. So sick picks, these are actually prototypes that I had sent to me before I tried the, uh, the final product. They're twisted so that they, um, they do what your hand would normally do for the twist to get the pick to slide across the string. Now it's, it's interesting because I, I do that twist already, but I, I really enjoyed these for quick sort of shredding. Um, they... They squeal really easily as well. fast um, but there's something about the twist that means that occasionally the bulbous part of here would stick under the string if I, if you don't if you're not really accurate which was a little bit irritating and also <coughs> they didn't stay in the hand particularly well and for some reason I found finger picking with them awkward so the shape although it was a unique concept didn't work for me. Um, next, unique, strange, odd, weird plectrum. This one's made of wood. Now, I've seen wooden plectrums before. This is handmade for me by another guy in America. Uh, I'm really sorry, I can't remember your name. But again, I think you were in Nashville. But this one has been carved to, to sit in the hand. Again, I'll do you a close up. And the carving, I think, is, is fairly unique. Um, no one has really done it quite as well as this before. Um, the only thing is, it really only allows one method of holding a plectrum. Now I hold a plectrum two or three different ways depending on what I'm doing. So it's a little bit kind of, you either hold it this way or you don't use the pick. I'm not a big fan of that. And the way they've carved it leaves a lot of pick sticking out and I don't use a lot of pick. <laughs> Weird, weird to, uh, to riff with. Yeah, I quite like it, but I have a feeling it's gonna, yeah, it's wearing down. Uh, I don't think wooden plectrums are made for electric guitar, that's what I really do most of all. It's very cool the way they've carved it, it smells great, feels nice in the hand, but I don't think it's going to last forever. Um, next pick, this is just a fun one, but actually the shape uh, was really good. Pick of Destiny. Again, this is one a friend gave to me on tour in the States, um, and I thought that's kind of a fun thing, but the shape is really cool. And although it's got a bit of a flex to it, which I wouldn't normally... There's something kind of Paul Gilberty about the attack. I'm not going to play like Paul Gilbert, but the way it flexes, it kind of, it kind of tic-tacks over the string in quite a pleasant uh, way.
actually, which is for me is unusual. I think it's the size and it's big, big plectrum. But for me, the the Gravity Razor. This is an advert, by the way. I just I just love picks. But the Gravity Razor. Um, is a combination of everything that I've always loved in a plectrum. It doesn't move. It's the right shape. <clears throat> they barely wear down at all. Um, they feel nice in the hand. They're solid. So yeah, that's what I use. I've got two of them here. Neither of these are my signature one because all my signature razors are in the car. Um, I've got a black and a blue. One of them's three, one of them's two. Uh, solid, beautiful. Mine have the, uh, the rough edge on them that you can see here. I really like what the rough edge does to the string and I like the way it feels. There's a, there's a real tactile sense when it passes over the string. It makes you play, well, makes me play in a different kind of way. <laughs> It just feels really nice. That's the blue one. Here's the black one, which is slightly thinner. That's the gauge I use. You can probably tell immediately I feel more comfortable with it. Yeah, that feels great. So that's it, Gravity Razors 2, that's why I use. And that's the process of elimination. Um, my evaluation of what makes a great pick is something that doesn't move so that you, you're soft with it. Um, something that doesn't bend. Something that feels aesthetically pleasing to you. Um, and I suppose if you find all those elements, then you've got a good pick. Uh, let's talk about these tour dates because I haven't really done a lot of promo about these tour dates. Oh, by the way, one more thing. I almost forgot to show you this. I made friends with Johnny Highland. Oh, it was great. I had a guitar lesson. Um, all, of, all of which was filmed for a documentary that we shot in America um, that will be on YouTube at some point, in, probably in a couple of months' time. He gave me this. It's, it's his signature V-pick inside a, a wristband so you can wear this, it's called a Pick Bands, B-A-N-D-Z, dubious spelling. But it's well cool because you can wear it and then you've always got a pick on you for times when you're like, oh, I can't find a pick. And ironically enough, when he gave it to me, I put it on and I was like, oh, I can't find my pick. <laughs> he was like, well, you're wearing one. <laughs> so I'll obviously put a gravity in there, but what a clever idea to have uh, a band that you can wear, a bit like a space age. It's better than I watch, put it that way. Um, that's a cool thing. Anyway, so, dates. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. I am tour tired, jet lagged, and uh, recovering from the road, put it that way. So tomorrow, which is the 22nd, we are at the Compass in Chester. So tomorrow's VIP clinic is at 17.15. Now most of these venues, by the way, are 14s and over. We tried really hard to make sure that they were available to some of the younger dudes. So you're gonna be accompanied by an adult if you're over, if you're 14 to sort of 16. <clears throat> but if you've got a friend that's over 16, you're in. Um, then the 23rd is audio in Glasgow, um, which was the date that we had to cancel last time because I got flown home. That should be a great gig. <clears throat> and Glasgow's VIP clinic is at 17.30. Glaswegians, I'm looking forward to seeing some of my Sutherland brothers. Got a couple of days off. Then the 27th is the Crawford Arms in Milton Keynes. Now I don't have a VIP clinic time for Milton Keynes yet, but as soon as I get it, I'll post it on Facebook. So make sure that you've liked my Facebook page if you want to go there. Um, got a day off, and then the 29th is the exchange in Bristol, back to the West Country to see my West Country brethren, 
uh, and VIP for Bristol is 1600 hours. That's going to be sick. Uh, then we're off to Wales. Now, we've only been to Wales once before with Dorje, so I'm hoping the Welsh brethren come together to see us. That's the Globe in Cardiff, and the VIP time for Cardiff is 1600 hours, sorry, 1800 uh, hours. So Bristol and Cardiff are both 1800. 31st is the borderline in London, and by the way, some of these are very near to being sold out, if not already sold out. Uh, I apologise if you get a buy ticket and they are gone. Uh, and the London borderline gig, the VIP clinic is at 1730. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be great. I feel like I haven't come off of tour because I've done so much tour. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to the East Coast of America, to the thousand-odd people that came to see us with overwhelming love, and I just felt really welcomed to America. It was very nice of you. We got, got given some wicked presents, um, a couple of pedals, a guitar, pedal board. I almost got a complete rig. <laughs> Um, and I'll be showing off some of those in the video coming soon. So please come and see the band. Come and see the guys, Dave, Beer, Ben and myself. And if you have always wanted to come and see a clinic, get a VIP ticket. Uh, there are bundles where you can get a t-shirt or and an album pre-order as well as a VIP ticket. They're really cool. Um, it's open VIP discussion, chat about anything like guitar techniques, theory gear, it's anything you want to ask us, you can ask us. And they're limited numbers too, so it isn't too crowded. It's, it's, we've kept them low so that it feels intimate and it's very chilled out. Um, if, you're, if you're a bit nervous because you've never been to a clinic before, um, or if you've never been to a gig before, because actually a few people have said this was my first ever gig, don't be nervous. Everyone there is going to be friendly, it's going to be a great time, and um, I'm just looking forward to getting out and doing some more playing with a band. Take it easy guys, chappers out.